there's been a problem that has bugged me for a while, and that is entry-level bikes have a problem with sustainability. Under $500, you're always told, don't bother keeping it or upgrading it. It's not worth it. And that seems wasteful. But Schwinn is trying to redefine what we mean when we say Walmart bike. Hey everyone, my name is Joseph and welcome back. Before we get into this video, I do want to disclose that Schwinn did send me this bike for free for the purpose of making a video. However, they did not have any control over this review and I will not be keeping the bike once I'm done. All these opinions you're about to hear are my own. Back on track, Walmart bikes don't really get a lot of love these days. That said, channels like Kev Central do show there is a large group of people out there that just want to get out on casual trails without going broke. But what if you do want to eventually take on more aggressive trails? The problem with a lot of Walmart bikes is how they are built. The frame is usually heavy or cheap construction, and then a lot of the components are either proprietary or just not built to take a beating. That's where Schwinn's new Axum starts an interesting conversation. At $398, it's certainly not the cheapest bike at Walmart, but still cheaper than most options you'll find at your local bike shop. Schwinn really squeezed as much as they could on this bike for just under $400, and the bike uses a lot of current standards that make repairs easy. I'll have a complete teardown video up soon that will go over every part of the bike, but here's the high level of it. Starting at the front, we have a 720mm flat bar with a 60mm stem. Moving down is a Schwinn branded 100mm coil fork with lockout and preload adjustments. The wheels are 29ers with 2.6 inch tires that should offer a lot of traction and some added comfort. The brakes are mechanical disc with a 180mm rotor up front and a 160 in the rear. To put down power, we have an 8-speed 1x drivetrain with an 11 to 40 tooth range. The rear derailleur is a design that Schwinn came up with in their factory. It's got some extra spring-loaded pivots that are supposed to help with chain tension in rough sections. We'll talk about that later. There's a lot of great stuff on this bike, but it comes with one catch. It only comes in one size, and that's somewhere around a large. This is one of the reasons why the bike is able to be so affordable, but it does limit the amount of people that can fit the bike. At 6'2", with a 32-inch inseam, I fit the bike pretty well stock. You can play around with the saddle position and trying out different bars and stem combos, but after a point, there is only so much you can do if you're just too short or tall to fit the bike. Now, for the bike geeks out there, here's the full list of geometry numbers. And for everyone else, the bike has a surprisingly modern geometry to it. Not just for a Walmart bike, but for a budget bike in general. Overall, I really like the look of this bike. The frame seems high quality for the cost, and the paint job looks really sharp. You also get internal routing for a dropper post, and the rear hub is quick release 141. We'll talk more about that later. Many have probably noticed the kickstand on this bike. I mean, I get why Schwinn put it on and it's easy to take it off, but it still feels out of place. I'd rather them use that cost for better components somewhere else on the bike. All right, I'm sure everyone just wants to know the real answer. How does this ride out on the trail? It was a little difficult waiting for the weather to get on my side, but I was able to get it out on a trail before the world got a little crazy. We're back at Floyd Hill to ride the Sluice. And for those of you that watched my GT Avalanche review, you'll know that this trail is what I kind of like to test all my bikes out on. It can get pretty advanced though, with features that can range all the way up to double black diamond, so this is probably not what the bike was intended to ride. We're gonna try to take it easy though. So I went ahead and removed the kickstand just because I really don't think that's necessary today. Got my knee pads strapped to the top tube. Let's go ahead and start climbing. Ooh, I will not lie. That seat does not feel good at all. That is a firm seat. The bike is decently heavy at just under 35 pounds. Though, keep in mind, this is a bike that's under $400, and compared to other Walmart bikes out there, 
that's actually not bad. The gearing on the bike definitely helps manage this extra weight, and if you're curious to find out where all this weight is coming from on the bike, keep an eye out for that teardown video. The geometry feels really good. I mean, quite honestly, a hardtail is a great climber anyway, so it's pretty hard to mess up this formula. And those plus size tires offer a ton of traction, but you do need to be careful about setting the pressures. There is one problem with the bike. The bottom bracket is unusually low, which makes it feel great at high speeds, but squeezing through technical sections is a little bit cumbersome. The good news is, this bike comes with a tapered head tube, which makes upgrading the fork a lot easier, and putting a longer fork on here could definitely help raise that bottom bracket just a little bit. Just had a realization, I've been passed by some people with really nice mountain bikes, and no one gave my bike a second look. And for a lot of people, that's gonna have a psychological effect. They're not gonna feel timid to go out on real mountain bike trails. It's like, ooh, someone might make fun of me for my bike. No, no one cares. It looks like a mountain bike and they're busy taking care of the climb. That's, uh, that's something to think about. I actually decided to test out this theory when I ran into some fellow mountain bikers. Without giving them any information, I asked for their candid opinion of what they thought of the bike. I just met John and Parker out here on the trail. They don't know anything about this bike. And they got some pretty <laughs> sweet bikes. Uh, which I was, did you say this was? Mojo 3. Mojo 3. Uh, specialized Enduro. Specialized Enduro. So what do you think about it? Just like looking it over, first, first impressions. Clean. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> put together well, clean bike. Um, Modern looking components. <clears throat> Notice the uh, mechanical disc brakes kind of off-brand cranks and derailleur. So, how much would you say this bike runs for retail? Five, five-ish. Five, five hundred dollars? What do you think? I'm gonna go 850. 850? 850. So, as you pointed out, this is Schwinn. Mm -hmm. This is $400 mm -hmm. and it's okay. sold at Walmart. Nice. Okay. This may have well, potential. It's not this bad for 400 bucks. Awesome, cool. guys. Thanks for uh, giving me first impressions. Yeah, no worries. And, uh, I'm gonna go ride this thing, see what happens. Cool. Enjoy yourself. Here we go. Whoa! Yeah. Okay. Definitely was not designed for this type of riding. Need two fingers for the brakes. Brakes are screaming. Woo. Now I do have to say, the tires got a lot of grip. Go. <laughs> I can't believe I rode that out. That was the stupidest thing ever. Oh, the shock basically has no effect on the ride. It's not even there. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna skip the rock roll today. Like on flow, this thing really shines because of that low bottom bracket. <laughs> nope, not today. Uh, not today. I don't think people appreciate just how sketchy this rock feature is. Oh yeah. Oh, this feels better. Some nice flow. All right, let's take that left line in. Woo! Basically out of the hairy stuff now. Oh wait, I uh, I don't think I want to do that again. That was really sketchy. Okay, let's get serious for a second. Taking this bike out on such an advanced trail is completely out of the realm of what it was designed for. In reality, this is the kind of riding that most people looking for their first mountain bike will be doing. None of us hit a double black diamond on our first ride out. The bike was a good amount of fun just goofing off and getting the feel for it. The shifting did pretty good and I only had one major glitch that was caused by me trying to dump too many gears while under heavy load. The brakes do take two fingers to really get some power out of them, but for most riders starting out, this will be more than enough for the trails they're going to ride. 
I also really liked how stable the bike felt when you got it up to speed, and the steering response was good. Even if the fork isn't the best, the 2.6 inch tires will smooth things out and give you lots of traction to control the bike. Speaking of the wheels, I'm sure people are going to ask, can you convert them to tubeless? The short answer is yes, but I wouldn't. The rim is too small in diameter, meaning there's a lot of play between the tire and the rim. This makes it a pain to get the tire seated on the rim and means if you get a flat out on the trail, you're going to need a CO2 canister to even have a hope of getting it reseated on the rim. And even then, that's a gamble. Now, because the rear hub size is 141 quick release, that means there are some 148 boost hubs that can be converted over to 141 with just some basic kits. I stress that you have to do your homework when doing this, especially before you buy anything. And the best way is to talk to the manufacturer to find out what will fit 141. If you do find a good deal on a 148 boost wheel that you can convert to 141, it makes a great upgrade that you can move to a new bike down the road. I made a whole video on where I find some of my best deals, and you can find that by clicking up here or finding it down in the description below. It's a great video that'll save you quite a bit of money. Revisiting that rear derailleur, the spring system they have is better than nothing, but it's still no replacement for a derailleur that has a clutch. Now, a clutch helps keep the chain under tension when taking big hits or going through rough sections. Now, no one is going to take this bike off a five foot drop, but this is just to show you how much a clutch can help. This also shows you why you should really take off that kickstand if you plan on riding more aggressive trails. It's just extra weight, it can flop all over the place, and in a crash, that's a very pointy piece of metal flopping around that you don't want coming anywhere near you. Now we come to the question, who is this bike for and should they buy it? This is what I've come up with. Schwinn is starting to peel off its big box persona and realize they can offer more to someone looking for their first mountain bike. Not everyone has the luxury of living near a good bike shop. And even then, it's hard to find a bike under $400 unless it's on a year-end closeout. You have the added bonus of the super easy Walmart return if the bike doesn't fit right or there's any other major issues. It's easy to tell someone to go buy a used bike or go direct to consumer, but people looking for their first mountain bike usually want things as painless as possible. If you're an experienced rider, I'd ask you to remember what it was like when you first got into this sport. You need to know what to watch out for on a used bike. And the idea of ordering your first bike online and putting it together yourself, that can be pretty intimidating for a lot of people. I really think it's great that this bike uses all standard parts. It can make upgrades more simple, but more importantly, you can walk into any bike shop for repairs and they can just grab something off the shelf. That makes this bike much more economical in the long run and you'll naturally upgrade parts as things wear out. Now, this also makes it a great bike to learn maintenance skills on. You don't have to worry about damaging a $100 part while learning the basics. To sum up, while it's still a Walmart bike, it's possibly the best Walmart bike that I've seen. It is far from perfect, but people could go with a lot worse options in the sportings department. But, I'm interested to hear what you think about this bike, so let me know what you think of it in the comments below. If you found this video informative, or at the very least entertaining, please feel free to give it a like and share it with someone else. Also, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. I have that teardown video coming, and uh, I might be working on another video pending things that are happening in the world. Normally, I tell you to get out there and find your next adventure, but things are a little crazy out there right now. So I'll sign off by saying be well and stay safe.